Now I want you guys to look at the production value you're getting here. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This video is part of the giveaway. So to be eligible for the giveaway for what will this be? Day, okay, is this day five? Day five, you have to like the video, be a subscriber or subscribe. So if you're already a subscriber, you're eligible. And comment in the video below. Uh, you wanna watch till the end because there's some more details at the end, but here's some of the stash we got. I mean, every day we're getting boxes from other vendors and stuff that are participating in this giveaway. You're not just getting some of our merch, you are getting merch from uh, some of the vendors that we do business with, so should be a pretty, pretty impressive giveaway as far as the amount of stuff you're gonna be getting. Also, if you want to get some Brown Farms merch or some Brian's Farm Videos merch before Christmas, you probably need to get those orders in as well. You can find the link to those in the description. Morning. So, we are one week removed from harvest. We finished one week ago. One thing we haven't done yet is we haven't collected all the monitors out of our equipment to go over data. We've kind of been going over it, but we need to get our actual yield monitors out so we can collect the data from them and you know get a better get a there we are get a better idea of how our crops did we've already been having meetings with seed companies about what kind of crops we're going to plant next year so we need to get that data out of the combines out of the tractors so that's what we're doing right now so we got everything packed in this barn like a bunch of sardines uh, bj is getting uh, his monitor out where we were running the cart ace and the display cast system uh, he has the yield monitor data in his tractor as well this would be a good morning for a cold start but i don't think we have to get this thing out today all right nothing to it so this is a ag leader in command 1200 that's what dad runs also our ag leader guy he is coming over today He's gonna help us go through some of this data so yeah i probably should have got this yesterday but oh well i mean he's gonna be here in like five minutes got a whole lot of ag leader going on here Yep, it snowed a little bit yesterday. First snow of the year. Why, Evan, you have impeccable timing. All right, so I think we can power these monitors in the building here. And Evan, our Ag Leader salesman from Precision Agri-Services, he's gonna help us dissect some of this data. So Evan, right here, you're connecting to the Wi-Fi to export data is that right to the yes. cloud yep so we're going to export uh the rest of your harvest data up to agfinity cloud and then basically pull that okay. data down from the cloud and into sms for you. okay so like i say I, mine disconnected a few times but all the data was still in the monitor it just had not went up to the cloud yet to where we could see it on our computer so still there just uh getting getting to where we can access it to the computer so right now we're shooting the data from that monitor to sms over to, yeah, basically Agfendi Cloud, and then from the cloud, we're pulling it down into SMS. So yeah. right now, so BJ is getting an SMS lesson. They're not learning much days. from me, because yeah. I'm not a yeah. Full <laughs> disclosure, I am not very good with SMS. SMS is a software system that basically we can take files out of an Ag Leader, out of another monitor, like a, like a Tremble or a... I, uh, a Pro 700, and we can make them all the same format. Is that right, Evan? You're basically making them all the same format, all the data is from different monitoring systems? Yeah, so yeah, you're pulling data from, let's say, your Agco monitors, your Ag Leader monitors. It's importing them into SMS. You have that ability to process all that da data from the different formats of the different displays that you use. Um, so you can you know, make some management decisions for, for next year. Yeah. Being that these are all Ag Leader monitors, that's not a huge deal. They're they're all in the same format, but we're able to, uh, like right now, we had a new field. Um, it had been named four times in the past year, so right now BJ's converging fields. Or merging those all into one name. Did you say converging? I did. I made, word? Word? I made up a word. I made up a word. It's Bob Golian. That, so right now we're all sitting around playing the blame game on who forgot to have their monitor set or who didn't have their combine in the right field so, so now we can we can see who exactly did that crap 
Now really, what we're doing here, this is probably a, a several day job um, sorting through all this data. This isn't something we're going to be able to you know, start making a lot of decisions on right now. But this is what we're going to be doing in the office while it's crappy weather out for a while. Here we are using Agfinity, which is kind of Ag Leader's version of a similar product like Climate or Field View or whatever which is kind of what we're replacing with this. So here we're able to print out a report and it has every variety of corn and what they made on all of our acres. So as long as we put the data in our, our monitor, right, there's our report, which that's questionable sometimes. Garbage in, garbage out. You can kind of do the same. Okay, so this is our, this is Agfinity Mobile. And yes. this is the field. That, this is one of our better fields for this year, actually. So then you can go in here and, and look at your rates that were applied as well and you can do the transparencies so the other thing to look at here as well so being as you i'll call it had different events you can toggle between the two events by okay, so this is over. where we were on different days of harvesting yeah field, multiple mm -hmm. days yep then you say you can transfer or you can overlay your spray records yep. refer to what basically any kind of product that was running through an act leader display mm-hmm yep and you can select uh, all kinds of different stuff that you want to see too based on the application that was done so if you had a hired hand in there you could figure out who was running it obviously it was your dad but you can turn on and off which ones I think it only allows you up to six okay um, but yeah you can start making some decisions that way so is that well. instant yeah, if you're synced to your computer, your yeah. monitor. Yeah, so you don't you don't wouldn't need to use that in a swear. You wouldn't have to. You yeah, can. Yeah, okay, like the field view. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it'll it'll okay. pull up the I'll call it live data if you want, but once you're done for the end of the day, it'll sync it to the cloud, and then yeah. you can pull it down from okay. the cloud and pull okay. it on here. Okay. Yeah. Let me ask you this, Dad. I mean, when you're in the sprayer. What is it that you're trying to see on here that you can't already see on here? Uh, nothing. So we're still playing around here with SMS a little bit. And on this field, this is the larger field right beside our new grain bins. And in that field, I've said multiple times, there's just, it's, good, it's a good field. There's just some bad spots where there used to be roads, railroad beds, fence lines, buildings. Um, here you can see, like this is a GPS image. There used to be a railroad bed here, a road through here, a building here, a tree line and a fence line here another tree line right here so it's kind of nice that you can image or overlay those images so you can kind of take that into account whenever you're you know figuring how how that field performed okay guys this is actually a couple days after uh, evan was here evan from uh, precision agri service he was uh he was well showing us how to basically use our ag leader data and dissect it and kind of help us print some reports off and whatnot but We've looked over some of this stuff, kind of sift through it with Agfinity. Um, we have had Ag Leader monitors for a long time, um, probably since Dad got his first Claus Combine, I would imagine. Wouldn't you say, Dad? Do you remember, you probably had Ag Leaders now for what, 10, 15 years? Yeah, probably. But we've never had two 1200s that could talk to each other with display casts. So um, I had used Agfinity ooh, when I first bought my Combine, but both Combines didn't have it. I really didn't use it any so this was the first year that i have used agfinity very much and um, basically with it you know, we were able to print off a nice report this shows all the varieties of corn that we had entered in shows what they all made over how many acres so basically we can tell you know what our best corn was yeah i really like that we've got the same for our beans only problem is there is these are only as accurate as as the user using it so there are some places where we screwed up we know it and you know that might reflect that but i thought that we would uh kind of discuss our experiences running display cast and running cart ace this year um as we're going through this data and whatnot but so this year in our combines dad and i each had an in command 1200 monitor um i don't know if we can power one of these on we can can't we yeah yeah so here we go i forgot we have the uh the cable that we can power this thing on while we're while we're sitting here but this is the monitors that were in our cabs. Okay, well apparently I don't know how to use it when it's not hooked up to a, to a machine. 
Okay, I thought we could be able to enter the run screen, but apparently we can't do that. I guess you can just get data off of here when it's not in the not in the combine. You might be able to. I just might not know what I'm doing either. But anyways, that's what uh, we were running our combines. Our grain cart, we had an in-command 800. The 800 is a smaller version of the 1200. Uh, just a smaller screen. It does most of the same things. There's just a couple little odds and end things it can't do. Um, there's some stuff that's, most of it's unlocks that would come with this monitor. But anyways, the grain cart, it was running the cart A system through that in command 800. And basically what it would do is it would record based on our steering lines or where our combine was. It would make the grain cart an AB line so that the grain cart remained the same distance away from the cart and or away, away from the combine. Basically, you don't have to worry about running over the bean head or um, getting too far one way or the other. So, I mean, it's just a little bit less stress on the on the cart operator and you're more consistent that way. So, what did I think of the, the cart A system from the cab of the combine? Uh, I didn't really, I mean, it, I didn't see a lot of difference from my seat. Um, one thing I noticed, I mean, Depending on how he had that set, he, I mean, he was always in the same spot. Sometimes I would tell him, hey, you need to get over this way a little bit more because we're loading one spot of the cart. Whereas if he was steering, you know, I mean, he might have been weaving in around a little bit. But it, it was nice that it was consistent. The big thing that was real nice about running display cast and cart ace together was BJ could tell how much grain we had in our combines. Um, if you go back to the first video where we installed this equipment, we installed a... Basically, it's a, a sensor that tells how many bushels are in our combines. So BJ would be able to look at the at his his screen, and he could tell, oh, Brian has 50 bushel, but Dad has 250 bushel. I better go to Dad's combine so he can unload. So that was nice. Plus, with the display cast, uh, BJ could get the, the variety and everything set up where he could add a variety to the monitor, and then with the display cast, it would go over to Dad's monitor or my monitor. So that was kind of nice, too. Now, from the combine side of things... Display cast, the thing I liked about it the most, both the combines are using the same AB line. So when we run beans, for example, before we would try to get as close as we could. Sometimes we'd be off. Uh, we'd maybe put it in the heading and you'd have to nudge. It wasn't bad, but having display cast, we had the exact same AB lines. I was seeing his yield data. He could see mine. I could see where he was in the field. He could see where I was. Didn't even have to be in the same field. Um, when Towards the end of harvest, we had split up. I could tell when Dad was moving fields if I was watching. I mean, all of a sudden the combine would be going 18 miles an hour. So that was pretty cool. You could also tell where the grain cart was and whatnot. So I like that information. And then when it came time to use our Agfinity, everything was already there. We didn't have to transfer any data. We didn't have to get a thumb drive and plug this in and transfer that to there. Our maps were already made and there they are. I mean, I, I like that. Now, that being said, this particular field, only one combine ran it. Now, this is actually the first time I have seen this field because I was planting wheat, I believe, when Dad ran this. But, you know, I mean, you can see with this yield map, I mean, you can kind of tell some things. Now, for example, these red spots here, a lot of that is due to elevation. So if we t put on an elevation map, you can see that these red spots here are roughly the same elevation. Um, yeah, there we go. And I mean, I, I mean, I know this field. I kind of know there's a ridge line right here and a ridge line right through there. But with one of these yield maps, we were able to look at this, and we can kind of. I mean, you, I kind of know where the soil types are bad. Like right here's a gravel bar, for example. So I know why that's red. But you can kind of tell. Sometimes you can see patterns by looking at soil maps, and then that can lead to well, maybe we need to go investigate that and see why that pattern looks that way. But this really doesn't look like nothing stands out about this map. This uh, this looks like what I would expect from this field with the kind of rainfall we had. Now that being said, a yield map I can make these colors do whatever I want. All I have to do is change this legend. So if you ever see a combine map, and let's just say hypothetically it's all green or it's all red legend just might be off that's one thing i would get asked is why is your map red or why is it this color my legend just might not be set right now another thing i like about display cast it's great in harvest other ways i could see it being really awesome when we're strip tilling for example if we had an ag leader system in the strip till tractor and the corn planting tractor 
basically that data would be streamed over to, I mean, they would have the same AB lines instantly. Versus, I mean, it's not a big deal to go plug in a jump drive, but it never fails. You end up getting to the field and you don't have the right lines or something. Um, with the splay cache, you wouldn't have to worry about that, and that would be nice. Um, plus, um, spray data, that would all be in the combine. Like if Dad was making spray plots, we side dress our fertilizers so with the sprayer. So all that plot data, or all those rates and everything that might change, would all be there already. So that would be pretty nice, too. Now, we did have some issues with DisplayCast, and I can't remember. I think most of our issues were from DisplayCast. I don't think we ever had any major issues with Cardace. And really, none of the issues that we had were major. They were almost all our fault. Most of the time, like, for example, the first night we were running this, we were having an awful time getting it, getting everything to work. As it turned out, it was very crucial that you each enter the same event. So basically what would happen was, like that first night, for example, Dad was already running. I went into the field at my combine. I opened up the field. And what had happened was, I did not select the event that Dad was doing. So therefore, we weren't seeing each other's data because we were recording data into two separate events. So that would... It'd be basically like if I went and tilled a field and then I went and planted it the next day. You're not going to have the coverage map from when you planted it and tilt, or you're not going to have the coverage map from when you tilled it while you're planting it. That's basically what we were doing. We were recording two sets of coverage maps. Once we got that figured out, things started working a little bit better. Every now and then one of us would screw up and we'd be in the wrong field. Or we've been using, uh, we really need to clean up our field names. We've been using these this sets of field names for a long time. So there's duplicates. Some of the fields have been changed. Some of them have a different name. Some have been combined. There's new ones. There's ones in there we don't farm anymore. So sometimes we'd be in the wrong field. Or um, sometimes we would layer things wrong. But for the most part, once we got that figured out, everything on DisplayCast worked pretty smooth. Other than my monitor, for some reason, it would log out of DisplayCast. Basically what DisplayCast is doing is I have a, a router in the combine, or a modem, or a router... Basically, I have a, I'm pulling in cell data. I have a cell plan for this monitor in my cab. I'm sending the data that I'm recording into the internet, into the cloud, and it's basically going to Dad's monitor. Or I mean, it, once it's on the cloud, both monitors can read it. So my monitor, like you see this symbol right here, that means that right there, that means that we are connected to. Agfinity and DisplayCast and all that good stuff it means we've, we're connected. Sometimes I would look up and I wouldn't be connected anymore. And then when that happens, I still have GPS. I'm still recording data. It's not a huge deal. But all of a sudden, BJ and my dad, they cannot see my yield data anymore. Cart Ace won't work anymore for the grain cart operator. And dad can't see my lines or anything like that. Not a big deal. Once I stop the combine, turn off the separator, I can enter in my password. And then all that data goes right back to right back to the cloud and nothing's missed. It was just kind of annoying. It would do that probably once every three or four days. Dad's never did it. BJ's never did it. Uh, I think there might've been something wrong with the modem that was, it, or the, the the router modem, whatever you want to call it. It's like it was losing um, like power every now and again. Um, I don't think it was anything major. I think maybe if nothing else, that, mo that modem or router, whatever you would call it, might need replaced or something looked at on it. But anyways, other than that, it worked great. Now, the one monitor is in the com or the grain cart. I've had that monitor since 2017. And apparently there's an internal battery in these. And that one started to go bad. And basically what that internal battery does is it like records things like, it's like your memory. So BJ would get in that thing and the date would be off. It doesn't sound like a big deal, but when you're trying to record an event, like everyone has to get on the same event, if his time and date is off, he can't get on the same event. So there was a couple times where we couldn't get Cardace to work because BJ wasn't on the same event as we were. Uh, once we figured that out, BJ would just have to manually put in, you know, his time and date. Uh, we were able to get through. Um, that, that monitor has been sent back to get the, the battery replaced in it, and then it should be good as new. But that's pretty much... Uh, you know, our overview of display cast and car days, like I said, really liking the display cast. We get along really well with our ag leader monitors. To me, the 1200 and the 800 and even the Integer before we still have an Integer in our fertilizer spreader, which is what dad ran his combine for years. They're the simplest monitors I've personally been around to get going. I think 
what's your opinion on that? Yeah. I mean, I think they're pretty simple to get in and make a steering yeah, line. Yeah. I mean, when you turn it on and you're harvesting, you click harvest. It walks you right through your menu and you're good to go. Some of them that I've been in, not so much. Um, but I think these are really simple monitors to get, to understand how they work. You get along pretty well with them. Um, so outside those few little things, uh, we really didn't have any issues with them. Now one thing we would like to do this winter, like I mentioned, we do have a lot of fields that duplicate and a lot of field boundaries that are probably off a little bit. We, we want to rig up one of the side-by-sides or maybe even one of the rock sores with uh, an RTK antenna and go around and map all of our fields that way. If I'm not mistaken, if we do that and we get everything dialed in pretty well, I'm pretty sure when we pull into the field, I think that'll all pop up if I'm, I could be mistaken there. But if we did that, all of our RTK would be a little bit more accurate as far as steering around the field. I mean, really, we, we wouldn't have to steer at all. And that would be awesome, especially with uh, running the strip till system. But yeah, that's a little bit on how we used our Ag Leader monitors and the technology that those have to kind of influence our, our decision making. I mean, for example, we were able to tell some things that... Like at one time, I thought this hybrid was our one of our not so good hybrids. I thought it was getting blown out of the water. Uh, sea Consultants, where is that one? Eleven fifty-eight. Is it ten fifty-eight or eleven fifty-eight? Ten fifty-eight in it or eleven fifty-eight? Sea Consultants eleven fifty-eight. I mean, I even called our our rep one time and said, "Hey, I th I think you're getting blown out pretty bad by a competing seed." And no, no, it um uh, that that variety average. That variety averaged 206, so that was one of our better varieties for this year. And that's that's why we like keeping track of this data. Um, it's easy to think that you have a variety doing real well, especially if you're in a certain spot, spot of the field. Then when you take into account all the end rows and all that stuff, I mean, you know, that happens. Now, one thing about Agfinity, this is the mobile app. Um, we use the desktop to print these reports. I, I, they have an app for basically what you'd see on the desktop. We just, we use the computer we were here. This is basically like, a, I mean, if we were in the combine and we were running, it would be building these maps as we were going. So this is kind of what you could use as like a cab app if you wanted to. What was that, Dad? I want so I could talk to it and tell it to, what to put in there and then it'll do it instead of me punching buttons. Do you think it'd understand you? Well, sure. Why wouldn't it understand me? you understand me? I understand you fine. Most of the time. Hey anyway, guys, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to thumbs up the video. Also, if you've been following along with the channel, we are doing the 12 days of giveaway. So with this being one of the, the giveaway videos, you do have to, you know, comment in this video, like the video, and already be a subscriber or subscribe to the channel to be eligible. But also, tomorrow's giveaway, which will be December the 5th, that will be taking place on Facebook, so you know you gotta check out the Facebook page to see how to be eligible for that giveaway.